Back to Knucklehead here, a.k.a. Brother Bruce Jr. Brother and sister, we turn our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We'll be looking at verses 4 and 5, and it reads, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, to the admission, to the application, to the distribution of this great word, taken from the greatest book that man could ever possess. I'm a brother, this is God's word. If you give God all the honor, all the glory, all the praise in the precious name of his son, our Lord, is here. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> You know, brothers and sisters, I remember back when I was in this cult called the Church of Christ. And I remember this one individual getting up and reading off of uh, 1 Samuel chapter 15, where the prophet Samuel admonishes um, Saul by saying, Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken unto the fats of the rams, and that uh, you know rebe rebellion is a sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is the idolatry and iniquity. And then he went on with this diatribe about, you see, God is looking for obedience from us, and he's not looking for for, for, for partial obedience, he's looking for full obedience. And I remember sitting there listening to, to that, that nonsense, and, and I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute. You know, in the book of Jonah, uh, God told Jonah to, uh, to, to go and, and, and preach to the people of Nineveh. And what Jonah did was he totally disobeyed God, and, and, and he went uh, another direction. So when he was talking about this, yeah, oh, God is looking for uh, uh, full obedience. He's, looking, uh, he's not looking for partial obedience. Well, God, you know, he is looking for obedience. But uh, the, the obedience that he's actually looking for God is the, the obedience that the Apostle Paul spoke of in... Uh, what we just saw in 2 um, Corinthians chapter 10 verses 4 and 5 where he says for all the weapons of our warfare are not carnal it, 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 it's not you know dependent on us it, it's not carnal it's not by us but it's made mighty by the pulling down of strongholds it's made mighty by God by the pulling down of strongholds and, and these strongholds are things that come against us in, in, in our minds. Bad teaching, wrong thinking, uh, uh, the false gospel. It, 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 the, the, it comes to the pulling down of strongholds, pulling those down, pulling those things down that are diametrically opposite of the things of God. And, and watch this, the Apostle Paul puts it this way. He says that we're casting down imaginations, those imaginations, again, those things that are going against the things of God. Bad teaching, false gospel, uh, um, um, uh, casting down those imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself to the knowledge of God. And what's those high things that exalt themselves to the knowledge of God? Are those false teachings. The false gospels. Those exalts itself to the knowledge of God. We gotta pull them down. Every high thing that exalts itself to the to the knowledge of God, and bringing every thought. So this is talking about how, how we think, and how we think, because how we think is going to determine how we feel, and how we feel is going to determine on the decisions we make. And the decisions that we make is gonna determine our actions. And our actions are going to determine the habits that we're gonna have. And the habits that we build is going to determine our characters. And our character is going to set us in the direction 
that we're going to go. You know, the, the godly directions. So we're to cast down those imaginations and those high things that exalts itself to the knowledge of God and bringing every thought to the obedience. Now, this is the obedience that God is looking for. The obedience of, our, of his son, our Lord, and our Savior, and sooner coming King Jesus Christ. Bring it to that obedience. The obedience is what he did on the finished work at the cross. The obedience is what he did when our Lord and Savior Jesus shed his precious blood. The obedience, as in Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, the Apostle Paul described it, the grace of Christ. Bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. And then, when you look at Romans chapter 5, verse 19, where the Apostle Paul writes, for by one man's disobedience, that's Adam, many were made sinners, but by one obedience, and that obedience is the, the obedience of, of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and soon to come, by his obedience, many hey, were made righteous. That is the obedience that God is looking at. That is the obedience that God wants us to look at. Hey, and if you look at Romans chapter 1, verse 5, where it said obedience to the faith. And when you look at Romans chapter 16, Verse 26, it says obedience to the faith. And what's those obedience faith? When you think about the book of Romans, so in the beginning of the book of Romans to the end of the book of Romans, and Romans is thought as, a, as the book of the Magna Carta of Christianity. So from the, from the beginning to the end, we're to have the obedience of faith. And that obedience of faith is the obedience of Christ. God is looking for that obedience, and God wants us to look at that obedience. <laughs> I ain't going to look at my obedience. I ain't going to look at Adam's obedience. I ain't going to look at, 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 at some, some cult uh, obedience. I'm going to look at Christ's obedience. Because when you look at Romans chapter 5, verse 19, when it talked about uh, 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 Adam's disobedience, we were made sinners. So we, 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 by his disobedience, we, we, we were made sinners. And there was nothing that we could do to outdo us being sinners by, by, by Adam's uh, uh, disobedience. But when you think, when you look at Christ's obedience, by one obedience, many were made righteous so we see that that by his obedience there's nothing that we could do to out undo that obedience or that righteousness that's in christ so brothers and sisters look to the obedience of christ <laughs> the same way our abba father looks to the obedience of christ <laughs> 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 Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his conscience to you. May the Lord give you his peace. I commend you all to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up in inheritance to those who are sanctified in the precious name of his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless in the presence of his glory, both glory, mercy, dominion, power, both now and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Amen. The obedience of Christ. Look at it. Believe it. And you will be made the righteousness of God. <laughs> In Christ Jesus. By faith. God bless. Agape love.